In this video we're going to look at probability distribution functions. Our working definition for a probability distribution function is it it is a if if all of its values are positive and the area under the curve is equal to 1. Okay. Uh, So we're going to look at, uh, at two continuous probability distribution functions today. Um, let me produce some of those for you. The, the first one is going to be called a, a normal probability distribution function. What it looks like is this. It's always a mounded curve. It actually goes on forever in both directions. I'm only showing the one tail over here, but here to the left it also goes out forever. And it takes all of that. Underneath that curve, the area is, uh, is equal to 1. So there's our x-axis. This curve keeps getting closer and closer to the x-axis as it comes out this way and closer and closer as it comes out this way the total area under the curve is 1. There are two things that we need to know about a, a, a probability, uh, about a normal distribution, is we need to know what its mean is. The mean is always the high point, and the standard deviation is kind of a measure of how much it's spread out. Let me show you a, another, uh, th this particular curve has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of uh, 1. Let me show you another one here. We'll put them side by side. Uh, this is a, another example of, of a normal uh, distribution. Its mean happens to be uh, B8, and its standard deviation happens to be 2. Notice that as the, the area under this curve is equal to 1, as is the area under this curve. Okay, so when the standard deviation is small, then that makes it a tall, skinny normal distribution. When the standard deviation is wide, then it, it, it begins to flatten it out. The mean just moves the standard deviation to the right or the left, depending on what the mean is. The mean in this one is 8. The mean in this one is, is 0. Okay. So, let's look at this situation now. This is an, another uh, example of, a, of a, a probability distribution function. It's called the uniform distribution function. What you need to know about it is what its minimum value is and what its maximum value is. Everywhere else to the left of the minimum and to the right of the maximum, this function is just zero all the time. But in between here, then the, that area ends up being one, and, it's, and the height of this thing is, is the same everywhere. Everything has the, the same probability of occurring in a, uniform in a uh, uniform distribution. Let's look at uh, another one here. Okay. This is a, another example of a normal uniform distribution. See, in this red one, the minimum was 0 and the maximum was 1, and so the height of this uniform distribution had to be 1. So that, so that height of 1, it doesn't look like the height and the width are the same here, but that's because things are kind of squished together on the, uh, the x-axis. The scale on the y-axis is different than the scale on the x-axis. And so what's happening here is the width is 1 and the height is 1, so the area is 1. In this blue, the width is 2, and so the height is going to need to be 1 half, so that that total area underneath that curve is always equal to, to 1. That's what a uniform uh, distribution uh, looks like. Okay, let's go and look at each of these uh, one at a time here. Let me put something in here. I, I'm interested in looking at a normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. 
and I'd like to find the probability that the x value is less than 0 0.45. I think that we can uh, give you a picture of that here. Okay, so there's the normal distribution. It has a mean of zero, so the high point is at zero. And it's got a standard deviation of one, that's telling how much it's spreading out. I'm just showing you the picture from a minus three to three. Those tails go out forever, of course. And we want to find the probability that uh, of, of all the x's that are, so the, the probability that x is less than 0 0.45. So 0 0.45 is over here between zero and one. It's almost at, at a half. And we are looking for this area. Now the nice thing about R is that it's got a command called the probability norm command that calculates that area for us. All that we need to do is tell it what the point is that we're looking at, the 0 0.45, and what the mean of the distribution is, and what the uh, standard deviation is. So let me just put that command into R. So there you go, and it and so that command you just entered that that command into R, and it tells us that area. Now when I'm doing these kinds of things, I have a piece of paper that I'm kind of sketching the picture in that I'm that I'm looking for, and then I ask R to do that that calculation for me. All right, let's do another example here. Okay, again. Let's put that here. Now, here's the problem. Suppose that in a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, we want to find the probability that x is greater than 0 0.45. See, the probability norm tells us the area that's less than that amount, but now suppose that we needed to find the area that was greater than. Well, we know that the total area under the curve is one, so to find this area that's greater than 0 0.45, we'll just need to take one minus that probability norm, and there it's doing that calculation for us. That's why I draw the picture so that I can kind of keep track of stuff. We wanted to find this white area up here, and the probability norm tells us this blue area, so we could just take one minus that, uh, that blue area and get the particular result that we're that we're needing. Okay, let's look at a another example. In a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, find the probability that x is less than 1.25. So um, less than a minus 1.25. Now look where minus 1.25 is. There's zero, minus one, minus 1.25. That's gonna be right around in there. So I'm gonna to want to find this area that's down below here. Let me, uh, I've got a little picture that'll produce that for us real quickly. Let me put that in. Okay, so there we are at a minus one, minus 1.25. So we're looking for that green area then in, in this particular problem. We're looking for the probability that x is less than a minus 1.25. And so the probability of um, the, the p norm uh, does that calculation for us. Okay, let's look at another problem that's kind of related to these. Okay, so in a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, find the probability that x is less than a minus one point. There it is, there's that calculation. And, uh, and we can just press the enter in R and it uh, produces that result for us. Okay, 
So similarly, if we were interested in this problem, uh, in a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, find the probability that x is greater than a minus 1.25. So there's a minus 1.25. We want to find all of this area up here. Okay, And that's going to be very easy to do. It's just going to be one minus that, that green area would, uh, produces that result. And there's R doing that calculation for us. Now let's uh, try this one. Okay, in a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, let, let me just clean this up so that we're not getting confused with anything that's there. Um, I can just... Sorry for that delay. In a normal distribution with the mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, that's the curve that we've got here. The mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Find the probability that the x is bigger than minus 1.25 but less than 0 0.45. Okay, so here we are and the, the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. We've got the right curve here. We know that the area to the left of this uh, uh, 0 0.45, this whole area back here, we've, we've got that particular amount calculated. That's not what we want. We only want the area that's between those two values. So if we, if we find this amount, that's too much. Then we're going to just subtract that amount because that's exactly how much too much it is. And so R will do that calculation for us. The probability that X is greater than a minus 1.25 but less than 0 0.45 is the probability norm of 0 0.45 minus the probability norm of minus 1.25. And so there's that probability that, uh, that we were needing to find. Okay. So let's clear our palette here for a minute. Um, let's look at, uh, at another question. Here it is. In, in this case, we're always looking at a, at a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Uh, in this one, we're going to look at, in a normal distribution with a mean of 12, see now the mean is over here at 12, okay? And the standard deviation is three. We need to find the probability that uh, x is less than uh, is that should be less than eight. I'm sorry, uh, I I noted that wrong. Is is less than a positive eight. Okay, we can uh, can do that pretty easily. Here's the calculation for a positive eight, not a negative eight. See there, I'm looking at the the probability norm of being less than 8 in a normal distribution that has a mean of 12 and a standard deviation of 1, it just finds that particular area, the area of this blue, uh, the, uh, the area of that blue uh, piece. And of course, similarly, if we were interested in this problem, a related problem, in a normal distribution with a mean of 12 and a standard deviation of 3, find the probability that we're greater than 8. That's this er this white area up here. And that's going to be easy to find. We're just going to look at 1 minus that blue area. And that gives us the result that we're interested in. Okay. Here's our next problem. In a normal distribution with a mean of 12 and a standard deviation of 3, find the, the probability that x is less than, than 13 but bigger than 8. Okay, so 
that, that calculation becomes the difference of two areas. We'll put those in here. That's easy to calculate. Just find the probability that we're less than 13. So there's the 13, and so it's this area all the way back here. That's too much. We'll subtract off the area of this kind of bluish green uh, piece. And so there we are calculating that particular probability. All right. Now, a very similar kind of thing happens with uh, um, uniform distributions. Let me just put one of those in here real quick. Uh, there's, there we've got a uniform distribution with the, uh, the minimum value is zero, the, the maximum value is one. So there's the, the distribution. And I want to find the probability of a uniform distribution. The, the function in R is P unif for uniform. The probability of a uniform distribution of being less than 0 0.6 when the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one, and that happens to be 0 0.6. You can uh, think about why that is. Let's look at another example of uniform distribution. Okay, in a uniform distribution with a, a minimum value of two, so now this, this uniform distribution function is going from 2 to 7. It's 0 everywhere less than 2, 0 everywhere bigger than 7, and the top of it is just always exactly the same. The total area underneath this curve is 1. The area in here is 1. We want the probability that we're less than 3. It's that blue probability. There's the calculation that we're going to need to do. There it is in, in R right now, and when we do that, it ends up being a 0.2. Okay. So suppose then that we have this problem. That in a uniform distribution with a minimum of 2, that's the same one that we were looking at, a maximum of 7, so there's that same function that we were looking at. We want to find the probability that x is less than 5 but greater than 3. So if we found the probability that we are less than 5, that would be this amount right here. Okay, But that would be all of this uh, colored part, both colors involved. So we want to subtract this part off. So the calculation is very much the kind of calculation we were doing before. There it is. And so the area of this light green part is a 0 0.4. Okay, that's the idea of continuous uniform distributions. And we've showed you two of them that R handles very well. The uniform distribution and the normal distribution. And we are using this P norm, the, the P norm and the P unif, uh, to, to calculate areas to the left of some particular amount. And then we could do some subtracting uh, to find lots of other interesting areas. Okay.